August 14, 1943. Dearest family, working like slaves, too tired to write and it's always too dark to see when I get off duty. We were so close to the lines we could see our artillery fire and also that of the Germans. The Jerrys have poor aim today. Shells landed in front of us and behind us. I'm well and as happy as one could be in this setup. Glad I have lots of energy. Don't know how the older nurses stand the pace. I finally got the slack suit and it fits perfectly. I love it. Our ingenious men made a shower out of a 250 gallon drum, a piece of hose and a shower head and plopped some wooden duck boards on the ground and wrapped a latrine screen around it. Heaven smiled on me briefly. In our pell-mell existence, we received our first naval casualties. A ship right offshore from us was bombed and strafed. Even our dentists were doing minor surgery. We were so swamped. We have surgical priorities that must be operated on first. Belly or chest wounds take precedence over orthopedic surgery or some simple debridement. Even if the patients are the enemy, if they fit the category, they come before the soldiers. At first, we used to line the inside of the surgery tent tops with clean sheets. It was supposed to keep the dirt from falling into the wounds. We needed a sewing machine to sew the sheets together, but when the machine arrived, there weren't any needles for it. Our infection rate was almost nil, despite the wounded coming from us straight from the battlefield. Many times there were maggots in their wounds, and when you carried them on the litter, the maggots would roll out of the wounds onto the canvas. Many wounded soldiers' faces still haunt my memory. I recall one 18-year-old boy who had just been brought in from the ambulance. I went to him immediately. He looked up at me, trustingly, sighed, and asked, how am I doing, nurse? I was standing at the head of his litter. I put my hands around his face, kissed his forehead and said, you are doing just fine, soldier. He smiled sweetly and said, I was just checking up. And then he died. Many of us shed tears in private. Otherwise, we try to be cheerful and reassuring. I've seen surgeons work for hours to save a young soldier's life, but despite it, they die on the operating table. Some doctors even collapsed across the patient, broke down and cried. There are many dedicated people here, giving their all, very tired.